This is the MX Mechanical Mini Keyboard from Logitech. And you've probably seen it plastered all over YouTube for the last few months. It seems to be the keyboard to buy right now, especially if you have a Mac, because it's one of the few keyboards that ships with a specific Mac version. It's wireless, has a built-in backlight, allows you to easily switch between multiple computers with the press of a button, has a ton of customization options, and it's mechanical. So naturally, I bought it because I was curious to see if it's actually good and worth the fairly premium price tag. But more importantly, how it stacks up to some of the popular competitors out there. Now, spoiler alert, like most other Logitech peripherals I've used on this channel, I like it. But it has a big problem that kind of ruins the appeal for me and might be a deal breaker for you as well. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Also, I bought this keyboard with my own money. So this review is not sponsored or endorsed by Logitech in any way. Okay, so who is the target market for a keyboard like this? It's wireless, it's mechanical, it's got a ton of really cool features. Who exactly is it for? Well, realistically, the target market is anyone looking for a high quality wireless keyboard. But Logitech mostly markets it towards productivity oriented workflows and professionals like creatives using the Adobe suite or programmers. Basically people who sit in front of their computer for hours and hours every single day. Now you might be familiar with Logitech's MX Keys keyboard that came out a few years ago and I reviewed on this channel previously. And this is essentially the same thing just with mechanical switches instead of membrane. So let's start with the build quality. Like most Logitech products, it's not exceptional, but it's sturdy and it certainly doesn't feel cheap. The chassis is made from plastic and there's an aluminum top case that adds a more premium look and also helps reduce any kind of flex of which there is essentially none, even when exerting a lot of force. Logitech also went the extra step and used recycled and low carbon materials where possible, which is always nice to see. Now, the overall form factor is quite thin and is slightly sloped away from your fingers. And there are feet on the back that flip out to give you one extra level or about eight degrees of adjustability. Personally, I use the keyboard flat on my desk without the feet, which is usually the most ergonomic and comfortable way for me to type. I also quite like the muted logo at the top and the minimal gray color scheme with the alternating keycap colors. Kind of gives the keyboard a little bit of character while still allowing it to fit into almost any setup style. And the space gray color scheme is also the only color option available for the standard version. So if you want the lighter pale gray color scheme, you need to buy the Mac version. Now, if you're curious as to the differences between the standard and Mac versions, well, there isn't much. The standard version has dual Mac and Windows icon keycap labels, whereas the Mac version has the standard Mac keyboard labeling. However, the Mac version does not come with the Logibolt USB receiver. I assume because all Macs come with Bluetooth already, so Logitech didn't think it necessary to include a dongle. Now, this might be an issue for some, but I'll touch on that a bit later. Now, you might have noticed you can get the MX Mechanical in two sizes, the standard full-sized version with a number pad and the mini version without the number pad. This mini form factor has been around for a while, and it's often referred to as 10 keyless. Functionally, they are the exact same keyboard. It's just the mini version is smaller has less keys and costs about $40 less. Personally, I never use the number pad. I mean, I just prefer a more compact keyboard so that I have more room on my desk and can position my keyboard right in front of me. However, I know that there are some XL fiends out there, for example, that love the number pad. So it's mainly personal preference. Now, in terms of battery life, I have zero complaints. I can easily get six to 10 months of battery life, which is <laughs> exceptional for a keyboard and it easily beats the Magic Keyboard from Apple. Now, the reason I can get such good battery life is instead of the backlight, I use a monitor light bar to illuminate the entire surface of my desk. It's just what I prefer in a darker environment. If you do use the backlight, however, this reduces the battery life significantly to around 12 to 15 days. 
depending how often you need the backlight. The backlight itself is just a single white color that's bright enough even during the day in brighter conditions. No, there's no RGB, thank God. It has different modes that can be adjusted in the Logi Options app. And yes, the backlight has a hand proximity sensor, so it only lights up when you're currently using it and auto adjusts with ambient light levels. Now, this proximity sensor is good and bad. Good because it conserves battery life and bad because the backlight turns off if I don't type anything for a few seconds. So when resuming my typing, I have to wait a split second for the backlight to turn back on, making it difficult to quickly find the key I was after. Now it's not a massive deal, it's just something you might notice when you're typing and it's a particularly dim room or dark night, for example. But again, I mean, you can just put an overhead light on or use a light bar, so it's not a massive issue. You can also easily see the remaining battery percentage using the Logi Options app or directly in macOS for Mac users. And the LED in the top right corner will also flash red when the battery gets low. Recharging is super simple because there's a USB-C port just to the left of the on-off switch. Now I shouldn't praise Logitech for using USB-C here because it's 2023 and this should be standard by now, but I'm just really glad they didn't go with anything dumb like micro USB or lightning like on the Magic Keyboard. And that was a really weird design choice by Apple. So it's good to see that Logitech has gone the right route with this keyboard. So let's talk about some of the features of the MX Mechanical. Like I mentioned previously, it's almost identical to the non-mechanical MX keys that came out just a few years ago. My favorite feature is being able to connect the keyboard to up to three different computers and switch between them with the press of a button. Something that I, as a dual Windows and Mac user, can really appreciate. And this goes hand in hand with the Logitech MX Master 3 and more recent 3S mouse. The MX mouse and keyboard, as you might expect from the name, pair together seamlessly and you can customize both in the Logi Options software, which lets you customize the different keys, the backlight, and also gives you access to the flow feature, which again is perfect for those using more than one computer at their desk, allowing you to use the same wireless mouse and keyboard to control several computers, regardless of operating system, and even transfer text images and files between them by simply copying and pasting. Now, as mentioned previously, I prefer to use the USB dongle receiver, which Logitech has dubbed the Logi Bolt. It uses Bluetooth low energy technology to pair up to six Logitech keyboards and mice to the same receiver. And I find that it's just a little bit more stable than connecting directly to whatever computer I'm using with Bluetooth and possibly improves latency ever so slightly, but Honestly, I don't think it matters which way you connect the keyboard. I've never really had issues when connecting directly via Bluetooth on my Mac, so I don't think it's a deal breaker that the Mac version of this keyboard comes without the dongle, so you won't notice the difference. Okay, so now we're at the most important part of this review, and that is the typing experience. Let's start with the mechanical switches themselves. Logitech went with Kale's new low profile Choc V2 switches, and you get three options here for switches. Tactile quiet, or brown switches, which I went with, linear red switches, or clicky blue switches. Switch choice is really up to personal preference, and I can spend 10 minutes explaining the difference between all of them, but the only way to find out which one you prefer best when typing is to actually use them in real life. That being said, a big reason why I like tactile quiet switches or brown switches as they're more commonly known is because they are quieter, as the name suggests, when compared to other switches. Mechanical keyboards, especially with clicky blue switches, can get very loud. And this can be incredibly annoying in an office environment or at home and someone is in the next room, for example. For reference, here is what the tactile quiet switches sound like when typing. And here are some more clicky switches on a different keyboard. You can immediately tell the difference in sound.
I feel that brown switches are kind of like the boring default standard for mechanical keyboards. So they're a good choice for people who don't really know which switch they'd prefer and just want a balanced experience. Anyway, finally we get to my biggest issue with this product. Is it a good keyboard? Yes. Is it a good mechanical keyboard? That's where it gets a little tricky. The entire point of a mechanical keyboard is the typing experience because I mean, that's what it boils down to at the end of the day. You're spending hours and hours pushing buttons with the tips of your fingers. Features like wireless connectivity, backlights and multi-device support, etc., are nice, but they're not the primary function or selling point of a mechanical keyboard. And I feel like Logitech has focused on all the other features more so than the actual mechanical typing experience. It's kind of like they just slapped some stock standard mechanical switches onto the body of their old MX Keys keyboard just to cash in on the mechanical keyboard hype train. So let's expand on this a little more. The actual keycaps on the MX Mechanical are nothing special. They're just basic ABS plastic, and you can replace these with other keycaps, but the spacebar uses proprietary stabilizers, which means you can't use any other spacebar keycaps if you don't like the stock one that comes with the keyboard. And this is a really weird design choice, I thought, in my opinion, just because the spacebar is the most commonly used key on a keyboard. So if you're gonna be wanting to switch one up, it's usually gonna be the spacebar. And when you combine the average keycaps with the switches, which again, are nothing special, it results in a fairly average typing experience that feels only marginally better than entry-level offerings from Keychron that are one third the price. For example, this is my Keychron Q4 with brown switches. It's more premium than the budget Keychron models I showed before and costs around the same as the MX Mechanical. Sure, it doesn't have quite as many fancy features as the MX Mechanical and it's not a low profile form factor, but the difference in typing experience is night and day. Have a listen. Now this particular keyboard isn't wireless, but if you want that and also something a little cheaper at around $50 less than the MX Mechanical, go for the Keychron K6 Pro. Regardless of which one you go with, you obviously can't tell from just watching and listening to this video, but believe me, there is a huge difference and you can feel it every single time you press a key. It just feels so much nicer on the Keychron. The Q4 and the K6 Pro are also completely customizable. and can be modded and adjusted to suit your exact liking. Although out of the box, they're still really nice to use. And the out of box aspect of these keyboards is also important here. Now we can get into the whole mechanical keyboard enthusiast rabbit hole and talk about double shot PBT keycaps or lubing switches but those users aren't really what these products are marketed at. It also doesn't really matter what keyboard you go with, either from Keychron or another brand altogether. I'm just trying to say that there are other, much better mechanical keyboards out there for either the same price or cheaper when compared to this Logitech option. So yeah, I think if I had to sum up this keyboard, it's kind of a weird combination between an Apple Magic keyboard the previous MX Keys keyboard and a proper mechanical keyboard like the Q4 from Keychron, for example. At the end of the day, it's a great keyboard with awesome features and build quality. But if you're really after the proper mechanical keyboard experience, it just falls short. And for me personally, that's a deal breaker. So I won't be using this as my daily driver, but maybe you're different. Let me know down below, always keen to hear comments from you and your thoughts and opinions. So leave a comment down below and I'll catch you in the next one.